Hi everybody, this is going to be our first video on Vue.js, the progressive JavaScript framework. Vue.js is an advanced front-end framework, one of the big three, Vue.js, React.js, and Angular.js, which if you're serious about front-end development, you should, you should definitely try to learn at least one of them. Um, as the next stepping stone in the evolution of your skill set. Now these frameworks are very powerful. I'm not going to get into the specifics of everything you can do with frameworks like this, but they are essential for much larger projects and enterprise level workflows. The co any company that you end up working for will likely be using one of these frameworks or a very similar framework so it is a very very good skill to have. Um, now here we have the Vue.js homepage, Vue.js.org, Vue.js.org, V-U-E-J-S dot O-R-G, where you can get started with Vue. <clears throat> it's got quite a bit of documentation, it's got quite a bit of tutorials uh, and guides and I definitely recommend diving into this a lot more deeply if you find Vue to be interesting. Okay, but I'm going to kind of take the shorter route. I'm going to get us started and I'm going to demonstrate a few of the essentials of Vue.js in this video. To get started with Vue.js, the easiest and simplest, most immediate way, click on Get Started and there is a CDN right here. That's all you need. This CDN, just like Bootstrap or jQuery, will get you set up and using Vue right away. As we move forward, you're going to want to move away from the CDN and use something called the Vue CLI or the Vue command line interface in order to set up a Vue project. But don't worry about that now and don't worry about that until you're comfortable using Vue because until that point, it is not essential. It's more important that you get comfortable using Vue and its features. So I'm going to copy the script tag. And here I have a template ready to go. I've gotten rid of everything that is not essential. So I don't even have Bootstrap in here. Uh, I don't even have jQuery. Already got my Vue CDN pasted right here, but I'm just going to paste. All I have is Vue and my main.js file. And of course my main.css, but that's currently empty and is gonna stay empty for this lesson. Okay, so we're, we're all set up now and ready to use Vue. One of the things that makes Vue so um, powerful, and this goes for the other frameworks as well, is two-way data binding. And I'm gonna show you what that looks like. To get started with Vue, what we need to do is create a new view instance and that's going to look like this new view with a capital V parentheses and inside those parentheses curly braces for an object just like that we have set up a new view instance and this is going to be where all of our logic and all of our data uh, is stored and is executed the first property of this giant view instance object. Remember, this is an object. That we, this is an object. That's what those curly braces mean. The first property or key in this object is going to be element, EL for element. And this element is going to tell the browser where the view instance is going to be executed or where it's going to apply. So what we're going to do is in our index, I'm going to create a div, give it an ID of app, and close it. Now everything, well, once I bind this to my view instance, everything inside this div with the ID of app is going to be susceptible to any code that I write in that view instance. Any view specific directives or logic is going to work only inside this div with the ID of app. That's how I'm getting set up. 
So I'm going to define the element on which this view instance needs to be active by simply writing a CSS selector in here. Hashtag app. That tells the browser that the element with the ID of app is going to be my where my app is going to execute. Okay. Now after element, we have a property called data, and this is the biggest and most important one. This data is going to store all of our data points. All of our data points that we're going to be using in our code. Now for example, I'm going to create a property inside data that's just called message. And it's going to contain the text, hello world, as always. Okay. Now this is the extent of our view instance so far, and we're not going to complicate it any further. Now that we have that set up, I'm going to show you what two-way data binding looks like. So back into my index.html. Uh, actually, why don't, I, why don't I split this up? We can see both at the same time. Let's put my JavaScript down here. Here we go. Close up my app element a little bit. Inside my app element, I'm going to create an h1. And inside of that, I'm going to use what's called mustache syntax, or uh, officially called interpolation. And it looks like this. Inside of those double curly braces, I'm going to write message. And then I'm going to close my h1. Save. Reload. And there's my message. There's my message. So I haven't written that message inside this h1. I have written it as a string inside the message property in my data, in my view instance. But this mustache syntax, these double curly braces, calls this data from the instance and plugs it in. So if I change this, it will be reflected in my HTML. And this is why view can be so powerful. One, the content of this message property can be completely dynamic. It can be determined by user action or interaction, or uh, it can be determined by a random function. Um, it can be determined by anything. It can be dynamic and change dynamically. And whenever it does, it will be reflected in the HTML immediately. Um, further, what this allows us to do is code all of the HTML ahead of time and then manage our content inside this view instance. And that can be really, really helpful when we're creating a web page that is um, unique to a user, like maybe an account page or a profile page. It needs to have the user's name here and the user's stats here and their image up here, all of that can be dynamically um, loaded as a result of this view instance without having to actually hard code it into HTML or use a lot of complicated JavaScript logic and, and appending elements and all that jazz. So this is just a very fundamental example of how view can be very powerful. This is called two-way data binding or interpolation. And I'm not restricted to just including message here. I can, I can write a whole additional sentence here. And it will simply concatenate with the content of message. So I can plug this in. Imagine if this were the heading of an email. Um, well, you get the idea. Imagine if this were the heading of an email or if this were a user's name or a unique user ID or the name of a piece of inventory or an article and I needed to plug that in somewhere into some dynamically generated content. This is how two-way data binding works. Now let's try one more example before we move on. Uh, I'm just going to write num. This is going to be another data 
property called num, and this is just going to be 100. Okay, and underneath the h1, I'll create another h1 that uses two way data binding to print num. Oh, I broke it. I didn't save. Always save. There we go. All right, and there's our num 100. Use two way data binding to, to call it into this h1. Well, what if I wanted to add 50 to it? This way, it's not going to work. This is going to be read as text, just as you'd expect if you wrote this in an h1. 100 plus 50 will print to the page. But if I instead write this inside my double curly braces, well, it's not just going to print 100 plus 50. It's going to actually execute this logic, this math, and print the result into our HTML. That's important to understand. We are executing JavaScript logic on the fly in our HTML. This is a very simple example but this can be extremely helpful and extremely useful in a lot of different scenarios. So num mod 50 return 0 because 100 minus, uh, divided by 50 has no remainder. Uh, 100 times 50. It's always going to perform that math. And now, no matter what the value of num is, if it changes depending on some other state in my application or some other function or some user input if I need to print this the the product of that num multiplied by 50 I can do that by executing this logic every time as a result of two-way data binding or interpolation okay so that's our first look at view um, I know it can feel a little why is this useful? But trust me, as your projects get bigger, and more importantly, as your company's projects get bigger, tools like this are extremely powerful methods um, to make your life and your boss's lives a lot, a lot easier.